हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर नंबर फोर दैट इज ऑन द मेंटेनेंस एंड ओवरऑलिंग एंड इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर सीइंग द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर दैट इज मेंटेनेंस एंड ओवरऑलिंग ऑफ द एंजिन कंपोनेंट्स अंटिल नाउ वी हैव सीन द मेंटेनेंस ऑफ द सिलेंडर द सिलेंडर हेड द सिलेंडर ब्लॉक एंड द वाल्व सर्विस वी हैव सीन ऑल दिस things in the previous video in this video we will learn about the crankshaft servicing also about the fuel injection system and about the carburetor system so let's start this video and let's learn this things in the details the first thing is to be learn is the crankshaft service now whenever the crankshaft requires the service the first thing that is required will be to inspect the crankshaft now to inspect the crankshaft the magna flux is used in the high tech service stations which passes the magnetic field in between the crankshaft and if there are any cracks or any other defects in the crankshaft it will be detected by the magna flux and that cracks should be repaired or generally the crankshaft will be replaced if there is crack in the crankshaft because there should be no chance of the failing of the crankshaft whenever we are running our vehicle so let's discuss the point that is required to be considered while we are doing the service of the crankshaft the first thing is that the crankshaft is the highly stressed component of the engine right the crankshaft faces the stresses which is very high in the value so there are chances of the defect on the crankshaft right also if we are driving the vehicle at an high speed then our stress on the crankshaft will be doubled right if we are doubling our speed then the stress will be four times to the speed right so stress increases with the speed so generally if the driver is rough and he is driving at an uneven speed or at very high speeds then there are chances of the damages on the crankshaft if there is any crack in the crankshaft then that has to be rejected otherwise there are chances of the failure of the crankshaft while the vehicle is being driven and it can cause a serious accident so to avoid that if there is a crack in the crankshaft then the crankshaft will be replaced crankshaft run out can also be checked with the help of either micrometer or dial indicator in the video of the wear measurement with the help of the micrometer we saw that micrometer was used to measure the run out of the crank by measuring the diameter of the bearings and the crankshafts so by using the run out method if the run out value or if the wear value on the crankshaft is above the given limit then the crankshaft should be replaced next thing is the crankshaft whenever the servicing is done then the grinding will be done on the crankshaft to get the proper value of the run out or proper even surface on the crankshaft whenever we are overhauling the engine right to do the grinding process there is a machinery on which the crankshaft will be fitted and on that the grinding will be done by the machine that you can see in the graph below and the last thing after the grinding always there is the requirement of the polishing of the crankshaft after grinding the crankshaft the surface on the crankshaft will be little bit rough so to avoid that to get the proper finish the polishing will be done after the grinding process so in the background behind you can see the grinding process of the crankshaft on which the grinding of the crankshaft is done with the help of grinding machinery and after that the polishing is being done on the crankshaft to get the proper finish on the crankshaft surface so that it gives you the best performance after the processes right you can see right now the polishing of the crankshaft after the grinding process in the background below right let's see further in this we will see about the tuning of the carburetor 
right the carburetor is the component which supplies the air plus fuel mixture in the petrol engine right or which used to supply right we can say which used to supply because nowadays there are mostly the fuel injectors in case of the four wheelers also in case of the two wheelers if they are bs6 modified then they will have also the fuel injectors in them to supply the fuel plus air but in case of the older vehicles there was a carburetor which was used to supply the fuel and air mixture into the engine it mixes the fuel and air and then it supplies to the engine so in case of the carburetor tuning there are some parameters which should be kept in the mind while we are tuning the carburetor first thing is that that emission control law only allows us to change the idle mixture flow right we cannot change the air flow or the fuel flow which was given from the company right because it will change the emissions from the vehicle and it can bring the values of the emission above the higher level so it will not come under the criteria of the puc so to avoid that we are only allowed to change the mixture that is the ideal mixture ideal mixture means when our vehicle in the idle condition then what amount of air plus fuel is supplied in the vehicle we call it a rate next thing is automatic chalk adjustment chalk is used to supply the air supply right the chalk valve supplies the air into the carburetor and then air and fuel gets mixed there are chalk provided in the two wheelers which is used for the cold starting in case of the cold starting the air flow is reduced and so that the air plus fuel mixture will be richer compared to the normal mixture because we are applying the chalk so that the air is reduced and the rich mixture is supplied in the vehicle so that the problem of the cold start can be avoided and vehicle can be started easily in the winter condition that can be done with the help of the carburetor as well the idle mixture settings can be done in idle condition what amount of fuel is getting entered in the engine can be controlled by the idle mixture settings all these things can be easily adjusted by the help of just rotating a nut in either clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction in any of the direction the vice versa effect will be adjusted so in the case of the carburetor tuning you can see the general carburetor which was used in the earlier vehicles so in this case if we will rotate the number 1 nut that was provided there that is idle speed screw right idle speed screw changes the fuel supply of the vehicle when vehicle is in idle condition right if we will rotate it in either of the direction the fuel flow will change accordingly if we want to increase the speed then we will rotate it in the clockwise direction which will open the valve so fuel will be supplied more if we want to reduce the rpm of the engine then we will rotate in the opposite direction also the second thing is idle mixture screw right that controls the overall air plus fuel mixture that is being supplied in the engine while vehicle is in the idle condition during the idle condition as low amount of the air plus fuel should be supplied which is only required to keep the engine in the running condition right vehicle is not get get going anywhere so what we need to do is we want to only keep the vehicle engine running while we are standing on in the idle condition so these two things can be adjusted according to the emission law whenever we are tuning our carburetor so in case of the fuel injection pump calibration what we can do is it is required to calibrate the pump of the diesel engine right the fuel pump will generally be used in case of the diesel engine that is required to pressurize the fuel before sending it into the engine through the fuel injector the fuel injector supplies the fuel into the engine by the help of the fuel pump generally the box type of fuel pump is used in case of the diesel engine now the fuel pump can be calibrated by the help of a simple test batch 
or a big test bed which is been provided in the service center in that the injectors will be placed and the pump will be placed in there and the sensors will be applied on them and that sensors will give you the value and the sensors will be provided on them and the sensors will give you the reading of the proper injection is given in that or not. If the injectors are clogged or if the pressure is not getting generated from the fuel pump then we need to calibrate the pump for the given amount of the fuel which is required during the compression stroke or whenever the fuel is required in the engine so that proper amount of the performance or the power can be generated by the engine with the help of this calibrating test rig. Calibrating test rig will look like the image you can see here which is the test rig connected with the computer screen. The readings will be taken from the screen, the sensor wiring will be attached to the injectors and the pump thing will all be connected. Right. So from this method you can easily calibrate the fuel injection pump of the diesel engine. Now let's see about the petrol fuel injector calibration. To calibrate the petrol fuel injectors, right, first thing why petrol fuel injectors? Nowadays the injectors are used in case of the petrol engines as well. Petrol engines uses the injector which supplies the fuel in the intake manifold. In the manifold air plus fuel gets mixed and then it is entered into the engine so that the injectors should be properly operating and to test the prop petrol fuel injectors we should look out for the injector resistance how much resistance is in injector how much fuel is getting supplied from the injector in the background behind me you can see the injectors being tested in the test rig and how much spray is coming from them the spray pattern should be proper, there should be no leaks from the injector and also there should be least amount of the resistance which supplies the required amount of the fuel whenever we require during the compression stroke. We will check the fuel flow by just seeing in the screen behind me. You can see that we can check the fuel flow from the injectors of the petrol. It should be within the limits of the fuel flow. The limited amount of the volume should be coming in the vehicle whenever the injector is supplying the fuel. Also if required, if the injector is not supplying the proper fuel, then we will clean the injectors. If the cleaning does not work for us and if the problem still persists, then we will replace the injectors if it is failing in the test. And the last thing is that we will check the leakage from the injector, right. The supply should be there but also there should be no leakage when the fuel is not being supplied. So that should also be checked whenever we are checking the fuel injectors of the petrol engine. Last thing is adjustment of the fuel injection pump timing, right. The fuel injection pump which was used in the diesel engine. The Bosch fuel injection pump is generally used in the diesel engine. It is as easier as just rotating the pump or rotating the nut. Just the rotation of the nut will change the injection pump timing. Right? Injection pump timing means at which time the diesel needs to be supplied in the engine. Generally it is earlier than the actual time whenever we are actually supplying the fuel that is earlier than the theoretical reading that we have already covered in the automobile engine subject in the fourth sample. So in this case the timing of the fuel injection will be adjusted. It is as simple as just rotating the pump or rotating the nut. The small movement will change the angle value at very high level. So we should be careful while moving the pump. If we will move the pump too much then there will be drastic changes to the timing of the fuel injection. We will not make any drastic changes or not make too many rotations of the pump which will change the value at very higher. First what we will do is we will match the angle with the crank by rotating the flywheel. Let us see the demonstration of how to adjust the fuel injection pump. For that 
first we will take our pump and we will keep it in the position when in the engine the pump will be fitted then there is a line or the level of the fuel there will be given by the line in the window which you can see from the pump and that line should meet the bottom line that should coincide with each other that is the, our fuel injection timing at that time at which angle our flywheel is at this angle our fuel will be supplied in the engine so that angle should be maintained whenever we are supplying the fuel so until then we will just put the pump and we will tighten the screws and then again we will rotate our flywheel and again we will keep it at the angle which we are supplying the fuel that is the 3 degree for the expansion stroke start in that case the for the 3 degree of the flywheel and then again we will check the two lines if they are matching then our timing has been adjusted properly here you can see that the flywheel is rotated and the angle was marked on that and at that angle the fuel injection pump will supply the fuel in the vehicle engine whenever it is required to burn the fuel and that angle will be set by this phase method so up until then we can see that pump can be adjusted and the time can be adjusted by the simple method so in the next lecture we will see some other accessories which is required for the engine such as lubrication system cooling system etc until then thank you so much